That's it? Great. The great, okay, good. Great morning, great morning, good, so you're catching on. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you guys for being here. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful fall day out today. We had practice this morning, noticed all the leaves changing colors, the reds, the, uh, the yellows, right, the fall's coming here. Uh, you guys could easily be out at Wilson's Apple Orchard picking apples or out at Kroll Farms getting pumpkins uh, with your kids if you have that. That's what I'd be doing if I were not, if my kids weren't in school and I weren't here, but uh, you know, kind of just appreciate you guys being here and, and your interest level always in uh, Iowa special teams. Kind of what where we're at right now, uh, as far as special teams go, happy, you know, with kind of how the, the units have been playing. Uh, definitely not satisfied. There's a lot more out there for us. Uh, you know, there's some things we've had some really good moments so far this year, and then some moments that some near misses where we felt like, you know, we really could have impacted the game but didn't do it. Uh, we always talk about here being championship level, uh, talking about championship level practice, championship level play in games. And again, we've seen that uh, so far this year at times, and there's times where, again, near misses where coulda, shoulda, woulda. Uh, so uh, the goal right now is trying to eliminate the coulda, shoulda, wouldas, and then more, you know, being happy and satisfied with the results. And um, you're happy with how the guys are playing. Uh, in general, you know, starting off with the punt game, I think Tori is punting the ball well. Um, for the most part, there's some things consistency-wise I know that he's not happy with. You know, I'm sure he's told you guys that. If he hasn't already, I'm sure he will. But uh, in, you know, as far as uh, coverage goes, as far as coverage goes, I've uh, been happy with the coverage. I think you guys have seen this in games already. You've seen Cooper flying down the field making tackles. You've seen Terry down the field making tackles. You've seen Jack Campbell, uh, you know, down there making tackles. And Xavier Wonk was a, a freshman who's you know, happened to, to join the join the unit, which is hard to do as a true freshman to play here in our in our punt unit. But he's doing it and doing it well. And uh, you know, along with the, the rest of the guys as well. And uh, I think it really speaks to uh, the culture uh, that we have here. And the way that this team, the way this team operates, it speaks to the character of the guys. You know, it's very rare you have an All-American linebacker like Jack Campbell flying down the field making tackles and not just doing it willingly, but wanting to do it. Uh, you guys saw that in the game last week. He was first guy down the field, ball pops up, bang, he's the guy that recovers it. Uh, again, I think it speaks volumes to his character and what he wants to do on this football team. Um, and that's, you know, that's set by Coach Ferentz, the, the culture and what we try to do around here uh, within within this building and within this team. And, uh, just happy with, with that, and again, some things we still need to clean up. Uh, ultimately, you talk about Tory, and I think he'll be the first to tell you, he's getting some really good snaps. Uh, some things that are kind of like hidden that people don't really notice, getting really good snaps from Luke Elkin. Something that maybe I think, uh, as a younger coach, I took for granted, uh, the snapper position and how critical that is and how, um, how, how much it can help a, help a punter. And uh, I think I've called Luke the, the ultimate setup man, like he's the uh, ultimate setup man, good snaps, puts the ball where, where he wants it, and then also he's getting down. You've guys seen that as well this year, getting down the field, uh, and tackling guys and, and making tackles, which is pretty rare for a snapper in college football or in uh, pro football. Um, as far as that goes, uh, you know, field goal units, uh, I think Drew's coming along as a, as a player. Uh, he's definitely young. Uh, he's had some, you know, every game is really like a new experience for him in some way because he was a high school kid a year ago really less than a year ago. But I think he's made a huge uh, transition since spring. And we've all kind of uh, kind of seen that now. He missed a kick, his last kick uh, against Illinois, which I know is just eating him away. But to me, that, that shows the guy's a competitor. He may be young, he may be inexperienced, but he's a competitor and he has that drive uh, inside. Um, and again, helped, helped again by a, a new holder with Tory, The first year holder, Tory's done a great job with that. Protection's been good. And then I go back to the ultimate setup man with Luke. And again, stuff that you don't really see. And a lot of times, if you really pay attention, you watch NFL snappers and where the laces are coming and how easy the operation is, that's what we're trying to get to. Um, if you ever watch that on, on Sundays, I don't pretend that you guys pay attention to that stuff. But as a special teams coach, I definitely do, and, and we do. And, uh, and I think we're getting some of that uh, right now from, from that position. But um, you know, as far as those two units, Kickoff's been good uh, so far. I've been happy with that. Uh, some guys flying down, make Jay Higgins playing a lot on defense, but also getting down there, making some tackles, making some big hits. It's been good for our football team. You know, the return game is a position, or both uh, kickoff and punt return, both of them we're still working to improve. I think there, we've seen, um, in kick return, we've seen Caleb Johnson like flashes of him as a potential exceptional returner. Uh, but they're still saying, you know, he's still a freshman, some things we're still cleaning up. Uh, the things that we're working on and we worked on this week uh, during the bye week, communication, um, 
a better understanding, alignments, finish, some of the little things that, uh, that can either make or break a big return in either punt return or, or kick return. So those have kind of been the focal points for us um, so far this year and then also you know, during the bye week. Um, but again, happy with where we're at, definitely not satisfied, and I think we can help our football team better. With that, uh, any questions you guys may have? I was interested in your, in your kick return unit. Uh, you have Louis Steck kind of back. It was like the third to the f back. I don't know how, what you're, how you call that, what position you call that. It's kind of unusual to see a, a defensive tackle back that far. What does he bring in, in your kick return unit that puts him in that position? And, and how comfortable would you be if the ball came to him? Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you noticed that Louis back there because, again, it's another position on our, on our team that kind of goes unheralded. Uh, unheralded, but but he brings a big, packs a big punch and uh, help, really helps our, our unit. So uh, another guy that played there was a defensive lineman. Um, oh my gosh, his name's escaping me right now. Oh my gosh, I loved him. 53 from Pella. Oh my gosh. Yes, thank you so much, Garrett Jansen. But it, very similar, right? Very mobile, can move, can strike guys on the run. Hard to do. Uh, you know, so typically it's fullbacks that play that position. A, a, a defensive lineman that plays that position, you see it a lot more in the NFL uh, than you do in college football, just based off the roster sizes. But I think Louis done a good job with that position. If you saw the first kick return uh, against Illinois, it was literally right in front of me, and it sounded like a car crash. Uh, and that's not something that's easy to do. It makes you realize why people are talking about eliminating kickoff from, from, uh, from football, because it was a collision, it was a hit, and they knocked that guy silly. Uh, but that's what Louis brings to the brings to the table. You know, he's a lower guy to the ground, bigger guy that can that can pack a punch and move people out of the way. So yeah, but he, and he's also had you know in practice, not in games, where he's had the ball in his hands and and can move with it. So yeah, but he does a good job. And not only that, if you pay attention, you really watch us and study us. He plays in our shield and in, uh, in punt as well. Again, an unheralded uh, position that really nobody wants because they're sending some guys straight through him right through his face, and Louis is a stout, powerful, tough guy that, that handles that dirty work. Again, part of special teams, I feel like there are some positions that the job is the job. It's sort of like playing fullback on offense, right? Like, OK, my shoulder's sore, my neck's sore. Someone still needs to go up there and slam in there into the linebacker. And I think that's the position that, that Louis played and played really well for us. When you look at a lot of special teams metrics, you've consistently been in the top 20 despite losing Charlie Jones, despite losing Caleb Shudek. What's the key to having that consistency? I think it goes back to the culture that Coach Ferentz sets within this building. And, and not only that, with what Coach Ferentz sets, but then what our guys are trying to do. And it, again, I go back to the character of the men on this team. And the guy, I, I keep bringing up the same guys, right, with Caleb, excuse me, with Caleb, with, uh, with Campbell, with Benson, you know, Roberts and DeJean, those guys are playing every snap on defense, yet they're still the first guys to the sideline to run down on, on punt coverage. You know, that doesn't happen on, on a lot of teams. You know, I can tell you as a player, when I was a player, I wasn't signing up, running to the coach, like, hey, put me in on punt. I was, OK, fine, I guess I'll do it. But these guys are different. Um, these guys are high character people, high, high character individuals that want to help their football team and want to make plays. And again, we, we're reaping the benefits of that right now. But again, that, all that is set from Coach Ferentz at the, at the top, the culture within the walls of this program. I have a question about a specific return last week the last one after their uh, Illinois last field goal. Uh, I think it was Gavin who, who caught it and then just kind of took a knee really quick. Was that designed to try to get the offense the ball really early or be, even though he's a, he's a deep back or was he just to just do that? on? Yeah, so don't like the ball hitting the ground, right? Of, of course, we don't ever want that in kick return, but we are trying to conserve time as well, right? So again, the thought is to not let it hit the ground. We want to catch the thing, get down as fast as we can, as much as we can, as fast as we can to, let the offense go because there's the timing is thrown off right so you've heard me talk about kick return in the past about like a symphony right the timing of all the strings and the chords and each, each instrument that's played at, at what time it's played timing gets thrown off when the ball's on the ground or the or the kick is short uh, so in that regard right we want, want to get as much as we can get down but let the offense have the ball with as much time as possible i can't remember if there's one timeout or or no timeouts left uh, within the game but that's what we're trying to do I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to like go get eight more yards in like one second? Or sure, I mean you're taking four or five seconds off the clock, potentially, yeah. First down.
Uh, eight yards is not a first down. Well, I knew. <laughs> I mean, I, I know what you're saying. Like, 20, I know what you're saying, but I don't know there's eight third. yards out there either. You know, based off what what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. turn wise. I, I can tell you, I wasn't disappointed by the decision. I was disappointed the ball hit the ground. Yeah. Because yeah, you don't ever want that ball. Would you rather have him fair catch that than that kick? Oh uh, yeah, if you can, okay. it's a, sometimes a tough kick if you're running up. So here's the other thing that's kind of unknown in in college football. So you have the fair catch rule, right? So a guy can signal fair catch. But if, you, if it's not a clean catch, the ball hits the ground, you don't get the ball at the 25. You get the ball wherever it's down. It's part of, knock on wood, why, why I don't like returners <laughs> doing this in the background. Because if it's not a clean catch, it's, it, we, we've benefited from that a couple of times. I think it was Northwestern last year. And I want to say either Nebraska in 18, Purdue in 2019, I want to say, they tried to fair catch and then boom, balls on the ground, we get it at the four. You know, you don't want that at all. So the, again, strategically, the play is you don't want the ball to hit the ground uh, for sure, but you know, how many yards are out there, you know, the, the journey's all over at that point. We just want to get the ball and give it back. Do you still consider it an open competition at kicker between Drew and Aaron, or are you more set on <coughs> Drew for now? I think Drew's done a really good job with the opportunities he's had uh, so far. You know, I know that Aaron's working his butt off, and same thing with Lucas Amaya uh, is, is working as well. But I think Drew's you know done a pretty good job with that role. Uh, he'll never say never or anything like that. And and you know, as long as the opportunities keep coming and he keeps taking advantage of them, I see that uh, going for him. But I, Aaron's right there as well, and he's been busting his butt and. Uh, working hard too. So, I, you know, coach said this uh, in a press conference, like, I don't think we've seen the last Aaron Blom. I, I would agree with him. I'd agree with him on that. You know, whether it's in place kicks or whether it's kickoffs, somewhere in there, um, you know, we're still working with that. What goes into the calculus of, you've seen Drew can obviously kick touchbacks consistently sure. between whether you want him to go for the touchback or whether you want him to try to drop it in kind of inside the five, inside the 10. Yeah, so hang time is, is taken into account. Like how, you know, we're, we're striving for four, four second hang time, right? So 4 0 hang is what we say. So anything beyond that is, is a bonus. Um, Drew's done a pretty good job with that. He's not totally at 4 0 hang time in his, on his kickoffs, but he's pretty close. Um, and again, I go back to the timing of kick return, right? So the timing gets thrown off when the ball is hanging way up in the air, like Michigan did to us, kicked the ball, I think it was 4 2 8 hang, and we tried to return it, and we found out real quick it's hard to do. Um, and then conversely, that's why you see at the end of games or end of, end of half when a, some, a team kicks the ball on the ground, right? Because the timing gets thrown off. It's hard. You may get five yards or even eight, potentially. Okay, maybe if you're lucky. Um, but very rarely do you see it phew, take off and, and go the distance. You know, so that's timing just gets thrown off by high hang and then balls on the ground. How uh, how happy are you at punt return right now? But we're trying, I feel like we can be better uh, in, in all regards. And again, that, that was the focal point today's practice and today's meeting was it comes down to the, the little things, the details, right, with how we're. So it's one thing, hey, I have my man, I'm running with him, I'm running with him. Well, if you're the returner back there who's like this, right, his eyes are up and he catches the ball and all of a sudden he looks forward, all of you guys look the same. You could be media members, you could be football players, it's all the same to me. I don't know who's on my team, who's not. Okay, but when there's a seam, when there's a, a when there's a separation created, right? When someone's, I'm running with my man, and I actually move him out of the way while I'm running with him. That opens the seam for the returners, and that's what we're trying to. That's what we focused on today is just trying to give the returner better vision, uh, more opportunities that way. So as far as you know, I don't know how many we faced some pretty good punters uh, so far. We've also faced a couple that uh, eliminate returns based off not great punts. Uh, you know, so I think the things we need to improve upon are ball, keeping the ball off the ground, right? fielding the ball. Uh, same thing in punt return and, and kick return so to eliminate some of that bleeding yardage, but then also in finishing some of our blocks. I feel like the guys that have been working there with AB and then also with, uh, with Cooper, I think we've got two pretty good, two pretty good candidates there with Wick coming along uh, as well. And some freshmen are still, they're not prime time ready yet, but they're, you know, they're working well in practice and anxious to see them kind of as we continue to move forward. You look at the, the Jay Higgins, the Kyle Fisher, the one who have excelled on special teams, and now they're getting a, a role on defense. 
who are kind of like those guys that are stepping into those roles? I know you mentioned Xavier earlier, yeah. but who are some other guys across the special teams unit that are impressing you and might be able to parlay that into play at their own position? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because those are two guys with both Jay and uh, and Kyler who have done exceptionally well on special teams, and they're you know sort of the bell cows for us, if you will, as core players on special teams, and you're seeing it translate into roles for them on on defense. Uh, as well, you, you mentioned one already with Xavier. I definitely see Xavier with that. Terry has sort of done that as well, right? Playing as a gunner and then transitioning into uh, into a corner. You know, Cooper's done that. He did that last year. You know, played mainly for us on special teams, and it just gave everyone confidence. Like, hey, put him in the game on defense, and then he hasn't come out since. Um, so you know, those are kind of the guys right now. As far as younger players, um, I could see right now in that role. There's there's a guy. Uh, that I've kind of got my eyes on and fixated on. It's not just myself, but the people I work with, Brock Sherman and Arash Asadi. Uh, the, Devin Hilson has done a really good job uh, on the scout team and done a really good, he's making it really hard for us is in kick return and uh, in the looks he's given us, uh, flying down the field and, and getting in on tackles. So we've transitioned him, okay, you're not doing this on the scout team anymore, you're doing it for us uh, in the kickoff unit. And he played us one snap in, uh, in punt uh, punt coverage last week as well. So that's a guy I could see transition in his role becoming a little bit bigger, not only on special teams, but in uh, on, on offense as well. You know, I don't want to speak for Coach Betts or anyone on, on offense, but I could I could see that. Um, some of the other guys you know, I mentioned um, previously, um, you know, I think Louie has done some of that as well with, with Coach Bell. You know, some of the toughness he brings to us on our football team. I'm glad you pointed him out because, again, both those positions he plays are not very glamorous positions, uh, but they're dirty work positions that need to get done, and he gets, he's been getting the job done fairly well. That's it. All right. Nothing? Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.